Welcome to the 23rd presentation for Women of Influence. The YWCA Dayton is proud to recognize this year's honorees. Getting things started are our Women of Influence chairs, Belinda Matthew Stenson and Diane Plyman. Welcome. We are proud to serve as chairs of the 23rd Annual YWCA Dayton Women of Influence Awards. After an especially long year, we're so excited tonight to finally recognize and pay tribute to this honoree class, a remarkable group of women who are eliminating racism and empowering women across the Miami Valley. Our honorees are so deserving of celebration and we couldn't have done it without the community's support. You can learn more at ywcadayton.org. Thank you and enjoy the show. Broken down and tired of living life on a merry-go-round, and you can't find the fighter I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out and move. Walk it out and all right. On March 11th, 2020, two things happened. COVID-19 was officially declared a global pandemic and Dayton's largest nonprofit luncheon, YWCA's Dayton's Women of Influence, was just hours away from opening its doors. But within 24 hours, YWCA went from setting up an event for 900 people to navigating hundreds of unknowns, including how to keep the women, girls and families they serve safe during a health crisis that impacted us all. Hi, I'm Letitia Perry, and I'm proud to serve as tonight's MC as we recognize an incredible group of women, the 23rd class of Women of Influence honorees. Each year since 1998, YWCA has celebrated those women who further the YW mission of eliminating racism, empowering women, and promoting peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. Tonight, we'll pay tribute to these seven honorees and tell you how you can support YWCA in empowering women through whatever storm they face. Let's start by listening to the words of Shannon Isom, President and CEO of YWCA Dayton. The other day, I remembered something that I had forgotten again. This is becoming a normative behavior that I am increasingly aware and increasingly measuring how much I remember, how much I forget. Maybe it is too much isolation and too much sameness, but maybe it is all of these. What I am clear, though, is that we all share this, the remembering of something we have forgotten. It has been over two years since we have celebrated our regional women of influence, and so much has happened since the last time we were all in the room. The KKK visited us, and our city was blocked off and scaled up for protection. Then the tornadoes hit, interrupting people's lives, their livelihoods. Do you remember what we have forgotten about those two events? The accounts of how scared people were, how angry people were, our attempt to plan and organize and react individually within a city, within a community. Then there was mass shootings in so many places, in so many cities. There was stream of consciousness that brought all 
that was happening around us was happening to us. And we all took a collective pause and sighed and cried over our loss and our losses. Then COVID hit and we just could not believe it. Remember, we couldn't believe it, but yet we could not ignore it. And then we in unison with the state went into lockdown, shutdown, and for many, way too many, we went into isolation. And then we saw increased violence, increased sexual assaults, increased risks, and decreased resources. We saw joblessness, illnesses, sicknesses, and then mourning. The culmination of many, way too many black and brown bodies were already being mistreated and mishandled, but something happened. This time, we watched it all together. This racial reckoning in which all of us knew and George Floyd then moved us from some to all. That summer of 2020 could not and would not be forgotten. You remember, you may remember also, but maybe you've forgotten that people showed up in protection of us against the KKK against that type of hatred, against division for our city, for our black community, for us. And they prayed and sang, and yes, they even did by any means necessary. And when the tornadoes hit, people gave their time, their money, their possessions, their prayers, their hugs, their supplies, churches, businesses, whole cities, they showed up for us. Class, race, gender, neighborhoods, high school representation, that status, that, those were no longer our defining lines. We were Dayton. The country knew us as Dayton, and here we are sharing with the rest of the country and the rest of the world in COVID and in racial reckoning. And COVID, I hope it's our latter chapters in our racial reckoning, though we know it's our again. And yet, with all these events since 1870, the YWCA has never, ever closed, has never, ever stopped, has never, ever resisted our absolute calling to always remember that we are right here, we are supposed to be right here. And I hope one day we will remember that we have forgotten that there's no longer a need to say that the YWCA Dayton believes in a community that we will have the elimination of racism, the empowerment of women, and peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all people in Dayton and abroad. Don't go anywhere. Our honoree tribute is up right after this. Founded in 1870, YWCA Dayton has survived multiple pandemics and more in its 151 years. Take a look at what 15 decades of service to the Miami Valley has accomplished. to see women, our great-great-grandmothers elevated and protected them. When the world refused to hear women, our great-grandmothers raised their voices. When the world refused to respect women, our grandmothers took up space. When the world remained unequal, our mothers demanded justice. And if our daughters need to keep fighting, YWCA is beside us. No matter how long it takes, we will get up, turn on our lights, open our doors, and do the work. Until injustice is rooted out, until institutions are transformed, until the world sees women, girls, and people of color the way we always have. Equal, powerful, unstoppable. We are YWCA, and we are still on a mission. Shelter for survivors of domestic violence, stable housing for women who are experiencing homelessness, leadership programs for girls. You can ensure that these critical services continue to help our community for the next 100 years. Please consider making a gift now. Text WOI to 44321. You can also donate online at ywcadayton.org. And now let's learn more about our amazing honorees. First, Mary Beth Graham, community volunteer and champion for the arts. 
She has raised four children as a single mom, at the same time holding down a full-time job with the Eddings Foundation as the administrator and doing major volunteer work here in uh, Dayton. She has saved two major buildings in downtown Dayton from the wrecking ball, including the Victoria Theater. This used to be an old movie theater and it was scheduled to be demolished and turned into a parking lot in downtown. And a group of people decided, no, we must keep that theater. We've lost other theaters. We must keep this theater. And she became the first president of the board that was working towards transforming the Victory Theater into the Victoria. Some years later, she became very interested in the arcade which was just sitting there as sort of a relic downtown. She started by selling note cards. Now, it looks like the arcade is going to be a success. It's going to be a go. But this all started with Mary Beth and Joe Granzo and Leon Bay raising the interest in the community and the consciousness of the community. She has helped celebrate Lincoln and build 11-foot statue of Lincoln that we have on Porter Square. She's had a lifetime uh, in education through West Carrollton schools, through Ohio Wesleyan. She's a remarkable woman, uh, a remarkable woman. It's been my pleasure to know her for 40 years. Plus, I think she's a model for women everywhere. Up next, longtime state lawmaker, Peggy Lehner. Senator Lehner has served in the legislature for a little over 10 years now, and prior to that, she was really involved in the community on a variety of different levels within um, varying community groups. She's also a mom. She's got a large family, so she spent many years raising her kids and being an integral part of her community at the same time. She has always really just been a champion for women in the community and across the state of Ohio. She has really championed a number of issues, including some really significant significant legislation around education, around really difficult topics like the prohibition of female genital mutilation in the state of Ohio. She has stood up against issues like spousal rape in the, in the state of Ohio. She has been the driving force behind securing critical funding for the renovation project at the YW. She continues to just really be passionate about ensuring that we have the resources we need to continue to fight for women in the Miami Valley and provide that safe space for women who are oftentimes fleeing dangerous situations. I think what I appreciate most about Senator Lehner is she's just real. She is who she is all the time. She's a straight shooter, not something you can say about all of the legislators, but she is. Good, bad, and the ugly, she's going to be truthful and she's going to be honest. But whenever she says she's going to do something, you can take it to the bank because she always does exactly what she says she's going to do. Due to term limits, she's going to be completing her term as senator. And with that, there's going to be a big hole that's going to be left in her place. But I have no doubt that she's going to remain active in the Miami Valley and continue to be a tremendous advocate for women and girls. And now we honor Maria Rutherford Long, fierce community advocate. She is so proudly a member of the Dayton community and she wants the best for this community. Really, she's tireless in how she works to go about trying to make Dayton a better place to live. I think anything that she does that she feels will help this community, and not just short run, but I mean in the long run, she gets excited about all of those. And, and that's, to me, that's why it keeps it fun for the rest of us, is seeing Maria's excitement, and, and, and not just her personal excitement, but, but she can also tell you why this is important for the future. It is infectious. It's been a great partnership since she's been on board with us. Maria's a collaborator. That's a real talent that not a lot of people have. And, and to see her do that, it's inspiring. And if you sit down and talk to Maria for 10 or 15 minutes, you'll walk away thinking that I know her pretty well. You know, there are things that happen every day in this community that can cause someone to have some doubts at times. Maria always seems to come back stronger. Maria always pushes through. And uh, for that, I would, I would say she's pretty unbreakable. I mean, she knows what she wants for this community. And you know, I think she has a very good picture of what can happen in this community if we all kind of can come together and work for 
uh, one goal, I think, and Mario is a good person to, to help us do that. Stay where you are. We have more honoree tributes coming up next. Welcome back. You're watching a tribute to YWCA Dayton's 23rd Annual Women of Influence. Next, let's learn more about honoree Jane Marks, key fundraiser and crucial supporter of the YWCA. I first met Jane when I joined the board in 2014. She had been on the board for about a year. She was serving on the finance committee, but she had also committed to take on what we called at the time the building committee. Had it not been for her leadership on the board, the renovation project, which was a $17 million project, would not have taken place. Jane is very committed to doing whatever she can do to empower other women who need the services of an organization such as this one. The women and the children who live here really deserve a beautiful space like this. And so she's very tenacious in working through any obstacles or challenges that may arise, but she's also very gracious in that she's very generous with herself, she's very generous with her time, not only in her work, not only in her volunteering and what she's given to the YWCA, but she is a great wife and mother and grandmother to her husband and her family. She is a woman that speaks truth. When you ask her her opinion, she is going to, you know, share with you very honestly, and it's not always possible to get that kind of feedback. So I really do appreciate the relationship and the friendship that she she and I have come to have, and I, I really consider her a good friend. Our next honoree is award-winning filmmaker, Julia Reichert. Julia Reichert has been making films for 50 years, and she is a Dayton activist as well as a nationally renowned filmmaker. She's known as kind of the godmother of independent cinema in documentary filmmaking in particular. And she has always been interested in telling honest stories about working class people and women in particular. Julia's biggest strength is her ability to listen and want to find the truth in a story. So many people trust her and her storytelling and they trust her with their stories and their, their passions. You know, you can't talk about her without bringing up all the awards. And from grassroots film festival kind of awards to Sundance Awards to the Academy Award winning American Factory. The Obamas picked it up as their very first film of Higher Ground, which is their production company. What's fascinating is that Julia's career could have taken her anywhere, and that certainly the work takes her around the world. The fact that she's decided to remain planted right here in Ohio and in Southern Ohio really speaks to her interest in the middle class and talking about real people. Ultimately, it's the body of work that's going to live forever. Julia's passion will be seen in her work for years and decades to come. Our final honoree is Becky Sorrell, longtime family advocate from Preble County. Becky's one of those people that she loves everybody. And it doesn't matter if they're rich or they're poor, when they walk through her doors, she's gonna take care of whatever need that they have. She's just like a big heart on two legs, but she doesn't let you see that. She's the most kind and caring person. With her job, she's seen some pretty horrific things in her tenure. So in her position, she might get a call in the middle of the night that children need to be removed from a home or whatever reason. And she's taking care of clients that a lot of people um, might look down on or not always think of as actual human beings. She doesn't see people by color or gender or who you love. She teaches us to just care about each other with her faith, with her, her love for people. She's able to keep going. Most people would have probably broken, but she just, there's something about her that's unbreakable and she, in her way, teaches me to be better. 
We'll be right back to celebrate the Lifetime Achievement Award. This is a tribute to YWCA Dayton's 23rd Annual Women of Influence. We end with a very special recognition, Lifetime Achievement Awardee Janelle Ross. Janelle is unbreakable. She's resilient. Janelle Ross is a very caring, charismatic person. She is very active in the community. The Pink Ribbon is just phenomenal. I have been with her and other friends and families and employees since the day she started. This last year, I won't give you a number, but she exceeded all the other donations that she has received in past years. She just continually rises above everything. Each year, she sets a higher goal. Janelle gives many hours toward giving to the community. She already had a legacy that was started as a young person within the company as she grew up with her mom and dad being owners of the company. But now she has one of her own and is continuing to grow because of all the exceptional things that she does. Most importantly, she does a lot with the YWCA. I don't see her slowing down. That's just the way Janelle is. She likes to get things done and she likes to keep things moving. And so there's certain goals I'm sure she has in so many different areas. I don't see her slowing down anytime soon. The honorees you met this evening are leaders, innovators, volunteers, and advocates, but most of all, they are agents of change, influencing people and perspectives that result in a stronger, more vibrant Miami Valley. Thank you, Women of Influence, and thank you at home for your support. There's still time to make a gift and ensure all women have a chance to feel empowered. And save the date, Women of Influence will be back in person on March 10th, 2022. Nominations for the next class of influential women open July 18th. You can learn more at ywcadayton.org. I'm Letitia Perry. Thank you so much for joining us.